So a few days ago, Blackmagic Design did a live stream where they showed off some of the new products that they're going to be releasing, but they also showed off DaVinci Resolve 19. And you can go ahead and download the public beta for that right now from the support page on Blackmagic's website. Now, they revealed a lot of super interesting and potentially very useful new features for Resolve 19, but one that specifically stood out to me was the Film Look Creator. It's essentially a built-in effect that allows you to build your own film look in what feels like a much easier and quicker way than how you would have had to do it up until this point. And from testing it over the past few days, I think that the way it works is However, keep in mind that this is going to be a studio only feature. So I wanna show you some examples of what you're able to do with this. All right, so these are the clips that we're gonna be looking at and the only thing I've done to each of them is converting them from S-Log to Rec. 709 using Phantom LUTs. I've made a video talking about Phantom LUTs before because I genuinely like them a ton and I've used them for pretty much every single color grade I've done over the past two plus years. I highly recommend them and if you wanna check them out, there is an affiliate link in the description as well as a discount code that you can use if you decide to pick something up. So this is the first clip that we're gonna be looking at, and this is what it looks like in S-Log. This is what it looks like converted to Rec. 709 with a Phantom LUT, and I'm gonna make a new node after that, and then I am gonna use the Film Look Creator effect on that. Right off the bat, you can see that it's already doing something to the image, and even though this isn't horrible by any means, I am going to adjust some of the settings to get it looking the way I want it. At the very top here, you've got some presets that you can go through. I personally find most of these a little bit weird and I don't necessarily use these. The only ones I use are the 65 mil and the 35 mil default presets and I just use them as a starting point for all of the other settings that I'm gonna be adjusting after that. So for this clip, I'm gonna use the default 35 mil preset and I'm gonna go from there. So usually after selecting a preset, I'm gonna go down to some of the bottom settings here like gate weave, and I'm gonna turn that off because I don't care about it. I'm also going to turn off flicker, and then I can go back to the color settings up here, which are your basic adjustments like exposure, contrast, white balance, saturation, and stuff like that. So for this image, I wanna bring down the exposure, and I also want to bring up the contrast a bit. And already, I think this looks pretty good, but we still have some more work to do. So I wanna move the white balance to the right to make this image warmer because I think that is going to look good and something around here looks pretty decent to me. I also wanna bring the tint more towards magenta because there's already a lot of green in this image and I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Then you've got the skin bias slider which allows you to make adjustments just to the skin tones in the image in case they were changed too much by any of the other settings that you did. So in this case, I will bring the skin bias slider a bit to the right. It's not a huge change or anything, but I notice it, so I think that this looks good. Then underneath that, you have the subtractive saturation slider which adds saturation to your image in a way that's a bit more filmic and the whole point of subtractive saturation is that you make your colors more saturated without increasing the luminance of them so you're basically making them more saturated but you're not making them brighter and as a general rule of thumb, when you want to get more filmic saturation for your colors, you want to either have them be darker but more saturated or brighter but more desaturated. You don't want them to be both more saturated and brighter because that ends up looking overwhelming and that's pretty much what the regular saturation slider does. So that's why I said that the subtractive saturation slider does this in a more filmic way. So if I increase this a bit, you're going to notice that the colors are becoming more saturated, but not necessarily brighter, which is what we want. Then I can also increase the richness of the colors, which is just going to make them appear richer and slightly deeper. And so far, this looks pretty nice to me. This is what we started with. This is where we're at right now. And then at the very bottom of the color settings, you have a bleach bypass effect, and you can pull this to the right to make it way more heavy handed if you want to, or you can just leave it slightly more subtle. 
but for this specific image, I'm not gonna use it at all. Right below that, we have the split toning section, and this basically gives you a way to add a split tone into your image in a way that's slightly easier than doing it with the color wheels because DaVinci Resolve is going to automatically select complementary colors for you, and it's going to add them into your image with just these sliders. So if I enable this and then I increase the amount, you're gonna notice that it's starting to push certain colors into the darker and the brighter parts of my image. And by using the hue angle slider, I can essentially select what combination of complementary colors it's adding into the image. But again, for this one, I am not gonna be using that. So I'm just gonna leave that unticked. Then below that, you got vignette. This is pretty simple. You can increase the amount of it. You can make it bigger or smaller. But for this image, the default size and amount is fine. And then under that, you have halation. And halation is basically this red haloing around the highlighted areas of of your footage. So if I turn that off, you're going to notice that the edges are no longer red. And if I turn it back on, the halation comes back. And then you can use the sliders to control how noticeable this is. So you can reduce the amount of it, you can reduce the radius of it, and you can also change the hue. So for this image, I am just going to bring this somewhere around 0.3, and I am going to decrease the radius a bit. And if I turn it on and off, this looks pretty good to me. When we go full screen, if I turn it off, it's not as noticeable, but you can still see it in the bright parts of the image, and this looks fine. After that, you have Bloom, which is basically a scattering of light that you see around the bright parts of your image. So if I turn it off, you're gonna notice that the highlights stop glowing as much. And then when you turn it back on, the glow comes back. You can use the sliders to control the amount of it and you can make it really glowy with the radius and amount. So if I go full screen and if I turn it off, you're going to notice that in general, it is very noticeable with the settings that I've got dialed in for it right now. And it makes the highlights glow quite a lot. So I'm just gonna bring that the amount and I'm also going to bring down the radius and this is more subtle but I like the look of this. Then below that you have grain and you've got some presets for the grain. And because up here I initially selected the 35 mil preset, the preset for the grain is also set to 35 millimeters. And below that you've got individual settings for the grain itself. But I typically just stick to using the presets because I think they look pretty good. So if I zoom into the image a bit here to show you what the grain looks like, this is what it's like with the 35 mil preset. If I set it to 65 mil, the grain becomes way finer and not as noticeable. And if I set it to 16, it becomes way more noticeable and the actual grain size becomes bigger. And basically the lower you go with the number for the grain preset, the bigger and more noticeable the grain is gonna be, which is why I typically stick to 35 or 65 because those aren't as noticeable to me and they're not as overwhelming as something like 16 or eight millimeters. But yeah, in general, this looks good to me. So this is what we started with when the clip was just converted from S-Log into Rec. 709. And this is what we ended up with by just making some of those adjustments that I just showed you. Of course, in a more normal workflow, I would probably also do some more adjustments before this conversion node here. But for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to show you that you're able to get a really good looking image by just dropping the film look creator effect on a node and making all of your adjustments in that same node. So here is another clip, and again, just converted from S-Log into Rec. 709. We're gonna add a new node, drop the Film Look Creator onto that. I'm gonna go with the 35 mil preset again, and I am going to bring the exposure down a touch contrast up a bit, highlights down because the light behind the camera is a bit bright. White balance needs to be a bit warmer here, so something like this looks decent to me. I also wanna bring the tint closer to magenta, so something around this looks good. I don't really think I need to touch the skin bias here. And then subtractive saturation is going to go up just a touch, richness up a touch. And for this image, I wanna add a little bit of a bleach bypass look. So I'm gonna drag the slider a bit to the right. This is what we started with. This is where we're at now. Then I'm gonna go into the split toning, enable that, bring up the amount a bit. And I'm gonna move the hue angle a touch just to get it looking the way I want it. This is what it looks like without the split toning and this is what it looks like with it. It's kind of subtle, but I like it. Then I am going to make the vignette slightly larger. So I'm gonna increase the amount and bring up the size. I'm gonna turn it off, turn it on, looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna go into halation. And if I just zoom into this edge here where the halation is very obvious, 
If I turn it off, you can clearly see that the red halation around this edge goes away. Then if I turn it back on, I'm going to bring down the amount to something like this. This looks pretty good to me. It is very subtle, but it is still here. And then I am also going to change the settings for the bloom a bit. If I turn it off, you can see that it's not doing way too much to this image, but it is helping with the glow of the highlights a bit. So I will bring the amount down just a touch. For the grain, I can zoom in to see what that is going to do. This is what it looks like at 35 millimeters. And maybe I can set this to 65 mil to make the grain a bit finer. And this looks good to me. This is what we started with, and this is what we ended up with. This is obviously up to personal preference, but I really like the look that I was able to achieve with a few simple adjustments. Here is the next clip. Again, this is S-Log. This is Rec. 709, new node, film look creator on that new node. I'm just going to leave the preset as the 65 millimeter one here, and then I'm going to bring the exposure down quite a bit for this one. Again, going to increase the contrast. Highlights can probably go down just a touch. White balance is going to be brought to a warmer point again. Something around here looks good. I'm going to bring the tint closer to magenta, but just by a bit. Skin bias doesn't really matter here, but I can bring it slightly to the right. Subtractive saturation is going to get increased a bit and richness is going to also go up. Starting point, and then this is where we're at. I'm not going to touch the split tone here. I'm also not going to change the vignette. I am going to open up the halation and going to reduce the amount a bit. I'm not going to touch the settings for the bloom, but I want to go into the grain and I actually want to select the 35 mil preset here because if we zoom into the back here, it gives nice texture to the image. And this looks really good to me. This is our starting point. This is where we're at right now. And if I wanted to, I could make a node before the conversion here and just bring up the shadows a touch because our subject is a little dark. And that actually does quite a lot to make the image look a bit better. But this is what it looks like in S-Log. And this is what we were able to achieve with the film look creator. Here's another clip again, S-Log conversion, new nodes, film look creator on that new node. I'm going to select the 35 mil preset, bring the exposure down, bring up the contrast, probably bring the exposure back up a bit, highlights down slightly. White balance needs to be a lot warmer here. Tint is going to also move towards magenta because there is a lot of green in the image and I don't want it to be too overpowering. I'm not going to do much with the skin bias here, just going to move it ever so slightly. I'm actually going to reduce the subtractive saturation by a bit here and then I'm going to increase the richness. And I'm also not going to touch the bleach bypass. I'm not going to do anything with the split tone, the vignette, but I do want to go into the halation settings because if we zoom in here, you're going to notice that the halation is way too strong. And that is because we used the 35 mil preset, but I want to bring that down so that it's not so overwhelming around the edges of the bright parts of the subject. So something like this, I'm also going to bring down the radius just a touch. So if I turn it off and then on again, you're going to notice that it's still visible, but it's not as strong as it was initially. And then I'm also going to go into the bloom settings and I'm going to turn down the amount of that as well. If I turn it off and then on, you can see that it is blooming here around the shirt, but I wanted to make it slightly less noticeable and something like this looks good to me. So this is our starting point and this is what we got to. And to me personally, this looks really good. Okay, here's another clip, S-Log, Rec. 709, new node, film look creator. I'm not going to touch the preset. I'm going to leave it as the 65 mil one here. And for this one, I'm actually going to bring up the exposure just a touch. I'm going to also bring up the contrast a bit. Highlights can go down a little bit. White balance is going to be warmer again because that is what I like. I'm not going to do anything to the tint here, but I will move the skin bias to the right. I'm not really going to mess with the subtractive saturation either here. I'm just going to increase the richness ever so slightly. Let's see what bleach bypass would do for us here. This actually looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it at 0.2. Then I'm not going to mess with split toning. I'm also not going to mess with the vignette. The halation also looks fine for this image, and I am going to increase the bloom amount a bit and also the radius because I want the glow around the bright parts of the image to be a bit more noticeable for this one. So if I turn it off, then I turn it back on. It's still kind of subtle, but but it is there and I like it. And then I'm not really going to mess with the grain at all because I like the look of the 65 mil grain. So this is the starting point and this is what we got to with just a few simple adjustments in one node with the film look creator. Here's the next clip, S-Log, Rec. 709, new node, film look creator on that. 
I'm going to select the default 35 mil preset. Exposure needs to go way down on this one. I'm not going to touch the contrast here because I think it's fine. I'm actually going to make the white balance slightly colder here. I'm going to go back to the exposure and bring it up a bit because I dragged it way too far down initially. Subtractive saturation is going to go up quite a bit for this one. And the richness is also going to go up. I'm not going to touch the bleach bypass here. I don't really want to do anything with the split tone either. I do want to zoom in and look at what the halation is doing for us here though. So if if I turn it off and then turn it back on, it's pretty obvious that it is very strong. So I'm going to bring down the amount a touch. Something like this looks better to me. I also want to see what the bloom is doing. So if I disable it and then enable it, if I go full screen, it's not that noticeable. So I'm not going to touch any of the settings here. And then if I zoom in to see what the grain is doing, this is what it would look like if it was set to 65 mil. This is 35 mil. This is 16 mil. This is way too strong for me personally. And just for the sake of comparison, this is what it looks like as eight millimeter grain. If we go out to full screen, it is very noticeable even in full screen. So I'm going to set that back to 35 mil. This is the starting point. This is the look. And here is the final clip that we're looking at. Again, S-Log, Rec 709, new node, film look effect. And even just by dropping it on the node without doing anything, this looks good to me already. But I am going to select the 35 mil preset. I'm also going to bring up the contrast a bit. I'm going to try to bring the highlights down just a touch because of the lamp on the left, even though it's not doing too much to it because it is already clipped. I want to make the white balance slightly cooler again. Something like this is fine. So I'm going to increase the subtraction subtractive saturation a touch. And I'm also going to increase the richness, probably need to bring down the subtractive saturation. And this looks good. This is what we started with. This is where we're at. And I don't think that there is much else that I would actually do to this image. This is the starting point, And then this is where we ended up. So yeah, I think that this is an absolutely great new feature. And I genuinely believe that it has the potential to save hours from the process of trying to give your footage the film look. I've heard some people saying that this has the potential to kill plugins like Dehancer. And while I do agree with certain arguments that support that statement, I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. But that's going to be a topic for a different video that I am going to be making soon. So make sure to stick around for that one.